shit clients say to freelancers. Ah, you've just got to laugh. <laughs> Otherwise I might cry. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. I welcome for the very first time all around. Welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com where I've been selling as a Fiverr Pro Verified Copywriter for about the past eight and a half years. And in today's Freelance Friday video, I'm going to be sharing all of the just like ridiculously stupid, annoying, frustrating comments that I've heard from clients over the years. There's so many comments, but I picked out the best ones that I think we can all relate to. Some of these are actual like big red flags. No, 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 no. <laughs> Others of them are just kind of frustrating or annoying. I guarantee if you've been freelancing for any period of time at all, like literally even a week, you've probably already heard some of these super obnoxious comments. But before we get into that, we have to announce this week's Blogger of the Week. If you would like to be the Blogger of the Week, just like DWI, all you have to do is drop a comment down below and you might get picked. All right, I sorted these sort of by type of frustration. It's kind of a scale, so you'll see as we wind through here, we've got little pockets of annoyances, little themes that people really just like dig into your soul with. My audience is everyone. I've complained about this before in other videos and I think this should be like super common sense, but no product, no concept, no service is for everyone, everywhere, at every price point, for every reason. That's just never true. You've got to be more specific. This is like a writer's worst nightmare. We want it to be exactly the same as this, but better. It's one thing to have a clear picture or inspiration or goal, absolutely. It is another thing to want to copy and better is subjective when they literally have a blueprint of exactly what they're expecting and also expect you to change it, but then they're like, wait, that's not exactly what I was expecting. Okay, this one's hard to put into a phrase, but <laughs> it's so annoying. When clients have no idea who their actual competition is and they say, oh, my competitors are, and they just list like delusional competition. I was writing some descriptions for a dropship jewelry company. So these were like 30 cents on AliExpress, some fake cheap pendant necklace that they were gonna sell for $8. And they come at me saying that their top competitors are Tiffany's, Chanel. Yeah, that's delusional. Like I can't work with that. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Just do it again. Do what again? If I do it again, I'm going to deliver the same thing I just delivered. Um, if you don't know what to tell me, no additional information, no creative direction, no fixes, no edits, no nothing. I literally have nothing to go off of and I will just stand by my work and send you the same thing. Very similar. I'll know it when I see it. For some reason, I don't think you will. I don't think you will know it when you see it because you don't know what you're looking for. Sometimes my intuition can do it. And I'm, I'm pretty good at that, honestly. People will say like, wow, I wasn't even sure what I was really looking for, but you've created this direction. You know, I never would have thought of that. Like, thanks for leading this um, project. Like, that's cool. But if anyone ever says, I'll know it when I see it in terms of revision or edits or changes or commentary, no, thank you. I forgot to tell you this earlier, but there are some times that people will say, I forgot to tell you this earlier. It was my fault. I'll pay for changes. Like I understand I'm at fault here. I just want it to be right. There's nothing wrong with that. That happened. But when it's, I forgot to tell you this earlier, but this needs to be changed. It's a big deal and I'm not gonna pay for it. That's where things get dicey. Hey, I just placed and started the order. I'll get back to you in about a week or two with those instructions. So annoying and I understand like why maybe they wanted to they had to get it on the books for the company credit card to pay for it or maybe they just wanted to get things rolling because they're waiting on other people down the line I get it but god it's so annoying because I don't want to have something stuck in my to-do list that I can't do anxiety levels so bad this is so weird to me when people say it doesn't actually have to be good no one's gonna read it why are we setting our standards so low like you could create something that's gonna be an asset for your company that you can build with and use as a tool, or you can just continue to fill your site with junk and do a not good job because you're currently not succeeding, which will then make you continue to not succeed. Like I hear that all the time from people and I just don't get it. I don't get that mindset. And when they're saying it doesn't have to be good, they're really saying like, I don't wanna pay for this. 
I'm gonna pay less for you to do a crappy job because no one reads it. No. Please send me your best discounted offer. I will send you the rates that I offer. And it's like people think that just by saying like, I demand your best discount that I'm just gonna roll over and be like, okay. <laughs> Well, since you asked, <laughs> this is a surprising red flag. When someone says, I could do this myself, but I don't have time, so I don't wanna pay very much. Because when people think that they are fully capable of doing my job, they don't wanna pay for it because somehow their time is more valuable than my time. They often are also delusional about having the skills that I have and they tend to be way more critical, again, because they think that they literally can do my job. And very, very rarely is that actually the case. Very rarely do I collaborate with someone where I'm like, wow, you literally could write this yourself. Why are you hiring me? Oh, you're literally too busy? Okay. And in that case, those people are great to work with, but that's such a small percentage. And almost all the time when people say that to me, I'm like, I'm getting bad vibes from you for this, sorry. Someone else said they'll do it much cheaper. Please match their rates. I would prefer to work with you. And you know why I charge more? The same reason that you would prefer to work with me. It's like common sense. The other thing is, I mean, I don't mean to be um, critical or not superstitious, that's the wrong word. Careful, there's a word, I can't think of it. But you can just make up the fact that someone else quoted you a lower rate. You can say that, pulling my leg and trying to force me into negotiating with you. And that's not like a cool way to go into business with someone, to be a collaborative partner, I don't dig that. If you love what you do, then it's not about the money. True, I do love what I do and it's not all about the money. But that doesn't mean that you can weirdly guilt me into offering you discounted rates to underprice myself. That's a weird leap to be making, my dude. If you do this for free, I'll add a tip next time. Or you could just pay me for what I'm doing right now, and then when you're inevitably really pleased, you can still leave a tick next time. The promise of future work I don't think has ever been a realistic motivator for me to do something for free. If a client's great to work with, motivator. If the project's really interesting and challenging, motivator. Uh, not the promise of more money down the road and definitely not the promise of more undercut work down the road. Hey, I'm vetting a bunch of sellers and everyone needs to deliver a free sample to me. Please select one of the prompts from the list that hasn't been taken by somebody else. You're literally spelling out the fact that you have made an entire content plan or project or whatever, and you are <laughs> getting everyone to do it for you for free. I need this in two hours, it shouldn't take long. No, no. <laughs> The only exception would be if you're one of my absolute favorite clients. I love working with you. You're so great and you're like, I'm so sorry. This totally came up last minute. I will pay you extra. I will tip you. I'm so sorry. I know I appreciate your work and I appreciate your time. Please. Then I'd be like, okay, maybe. <laughs> Their urgency is not your emergency. And last but not least, shit people say to freelancers which is probably one of the most infuriating things, even on top of that whole list that, I mean, I'm just laughing, it's not that bad. This one literally makes me want to scream. Are you single? I came here to work. All right, speaking of single, I forgot to put my wedding ring on today, but I am married. Yesterday was our seven year anniversary. Congrats to us. Let me know in the comments down below if I missed a comment, an annoying, phrase that people tell you in the freelancing world. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are still watching, you know you are my actual hero. You're the best. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. You can find lots of cool links to stuff I've got going on down in the comment and description down below. Remember, you are worth so much more than your workload and let's get back to work. Mm -hmm.